Pastor Kendall Fleetwood, uh, along with my wife, Pastor George Fleetwood. We're the pastors and founders of Victory Tabernacle Bible Training Center in the way here tonight for praise and worship and for Bible study. And we ask you to join us as we come and bless the Lord. And I'm going to I'm gonna give everybody a few minutes to go ahead and invite somebody in. Go ahead and invite somebody in. Make sure you invite somebody. Let somebody know that Victory Tabernacle is on the air. Let them know that we're getting ready to go into virtual worship and virtual praise and to virtual Bible study. And we're going to go into intimacy again tonight, part four. But before that, uh, Pastor Joyce, along with Minister Jawan, Minister Josh, and Brother St. Juan, they're going to come in and they're going to lead us into praise and worship. So don't be afraid to invite somebody in, like it, share it, invite somebody in and let them know that hallelujah to God, that we're glorifying God and that we're giving God the praise and that God is so awesome to us and he's so unique to us. I'm telling you, hallelujah, we had a, we had a time here on Sunday. Yes, God really yes. blessed us on Sunday. Hallelujah. He's going to bless us tonight. I ask you to receive. And let me say this by way of announcement. Don't forget on Mother's Day. On Mother's Day, Pastor Joyce will be in concert. Hallelujah. She'll be giving a Mother's Day concert. Hallelujah to God. Right here on the air. Facebook Live. On Mother's Day. But in the meantime, let's give it up for Pastor Joyce. Hallelujah. Minister Josh, Minister Jawan, and Brother St. Quan as they come and present praise and worship for us on today. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you for joining us. Come on and lift your hands. If you know he's worthy right there where you are, we magnify Jesus tonight. We're giving God the praise. We're giving him the glory that he deserves. We bring you one simple message tonight. That message is that there's none like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on, let's lift our hands and worship in here. We worship you, Jesus. We give you name and praise. Song says, there is none like you. Sing with us. Thank you, Father. Glory to God.
of these things out of the way tonight, these 10 points that I want to make. And I'm going to rush through the first five because we already went over them last night, last week. The first thing in verse 67 was David said, before I was afflicted, I went astray. He said, but now I've kept your word. The word went astray, man. If you look it up in the Hebrews, it means to commit sin and to commit error. My it God. means to wander away. Hallelujah to God from his post. It means to follow from afar off. And what David was trying to get across to us was that he lost his intimacy with God. His, his close fellowship, his close relationship, uh, hallelujah, that he found himself going backward instead of going forward. Uh, and he found himself losing his intimacy with God. You, and David said, I've got to tell the truth about it. I want to stray. Yes, yes, I've got yes. to be honest with you. I've got to be transparent that I went astray. Yes. So the, the first point that I wanted them to bring out is, hallelujah to God, David was transparent enough, he loved God enough that he was willing to come clean with God and said, before I was afflicted, yes. hallelujah, yes. I went astray. I'm not even worried about, I'm not even going to deal with the affliction part. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. I want to deal with the fact that he went astray. I wanted to deal with the fact, hallelujah, that God, many of us that are listening to me, sometime in our point and I walk with God, even if not now, somewhere in our walk with God, we went astray. God, somewhere in our walk with God, we quit praying. We quit we fellowshipping with the Father. We quit reading our word. We quit loving the brethren. Somewhere in our walk God. with God that we went astray. Yeah, somewhere, yeah. hallelujah, that God, we can truly say that I am not as close to God as I was but how many of y'all understand and I walk with God it is a, we are supposed to hallelujah get closer to the Lord every day every week every year we are so I will walk with God and our intimacy with God is supposed to be progressive yes, and not yes, regressive yes, yes. God. And David said, I regressed. I went astray. But listen, the point I'm not even worried about before I was afflicted. I see that in there, but I'm not dealing with that. I want to deal with that he went astray. God. But now, the road to recovery, the road to getting back to recovering, uh, to get his intimacy back, to get that close relationship back, to get that close fellowship back, was well, David said, but now I've kept thy word. Yes. David understood uh, that the path to intimacy start with me keeping the word. It starts with me retaining the word, guarding the word, protecting the word, watching over the word, uh, being like a doorkeeper and a gatekeeper concerning the word. Because after a while, after all, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. It is a lamp unto my feet. Uh, hallelujah to God. So uh, David said, with, with shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to the word. So the point I wanted to make, number one, is that David went astray. My number God. two, that the path and the road to recovery begins with the keeping of the word. He said, if you love me, you'll do what? Keep Amen. my commandments. Yes, yes. So that's the second point. We're moving on. The third point I want you to, to bring out is, hallelujah, we find in verse 68 uh, that David gets a proper, and you need to remember this because we're going to revisit this. Uh, he gets a proper perspective of God. Uh, he sees God's character. He said, thou art good and you doeth good. Uh, and so what, 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 what do we see here? Uh, we see David has a right perspective of God. Uh, he sees God character. He said, God, you were good. Uh, you were good in nature. And not only are you good in nature, but how many know you do good? Uh, you're good in action. You're not just a God, a nature good God, but you are an 
action, good God. Uh, he said, listen, I know, hallelujah to God, that you're good in nature, your character is good, hallelujah, but David said, dealing with me and the thing that I've been through, I know you do good, uh, hallelujah to God, because I know I went astray, but in the midst of me going astray, your goodness not only was it in character, but it was in action, uh, hallelujah, because you got me right back yeah. in fellowship yeah. Yeah. with you. Yeah. Not only are you good, but you do good. Uh, hallelujah to God. Not only are you good. Hallelujah. See, I'm going to get stuck here. Not only are you good. Hallelujah. In character, but you're good in nature. Uh, not only are you good in character and in nature, but you're good in action. Uh, oh, God, I praise you. We can see God. That's why the songwriter said God is good all the time. Uh, because how many of y'all know he's He's good not just in nature, not just in character, but he's good in action. And the reason why he's good in action, uh, hallelujah, because that is his character and that is his nature. Yes, yes, yes. Make sure you understand he had no, And so David, he gets a right perspective of God. He said, God is good, and you do of good. And so he says now, he said, I need you to teach me. He said, teach me thy statue. David is saying now, now listen, how many of y'all know David is now? So what is the fourth point, Pastor? The fourth point is... What do, what do you want us to know tonight? I want you to know tonight, number one, David went astray. I want you to know tonight, hallelujah, but David on the path to intimacy, he started keeping the word. I want you to know that David path to intimacy was that he had a right perspective of God. You were good and you do of good. He has a right perspective of God's character. He has a right perspective of God's nature. And now, hallelujah, that God's nature and God's character is being personified by his action yes, called in yes, action. Yes, yes. Hallelujah to God. So now, what is the next thing you want me to know tonight, Pastor? Number four, his path to intimacy, tell your neighbor he's teachable. And that's why he said, teach me thy statue. Don't tell me you went astray and you was teachable. No, no, no. He said, now I'm at a place where I'm teachable. I want to, and when he said, teach me, he just doesn't mean I just want to know this stuff. He said, I want to become an expert. I want to become an instructor. Hallelujah. And if you look that word up in the Hebrew, it means to really learn. I want to be capable of being taught. I'm capable of being taught. I'm spiritual at and I'm willing to learn. Look at his desire. Look at David's desire for the word. Hallelujah to God. Look at his desire to be teachable. And I believe he's to the point where he wants to be a doer of the word and not just a hero only deceiving him own self. I believe David is to the place now, hallelujah to God, where he understands that the grass wither, the flower fade, but the word of our God is going to stand forever. I believe David is at the point now where he gets a revelation that the entrance of that word, it giveth light and giveth understanding even to the simple. Yes, yes. David is teachable. He's in a place, hallelujah to God, he's in a place of being teachable. He understands that the word is not going to go hallelujah to God. He understands now that God said, my word, so shall my word be to go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return for it, but it's going to accomplish that which I plead, and it's going to prosper in the thing where to I sit it. David understands now. He gets a revelation now. Hallelujah to God, because now he's in a teachable state. He's on the path to, hallelujah, being intimate with God. My God. My God. Well, what's the next thing? Number five. The next thing I want y'all to understand. Hallelujah to God. Let's look at verse. Uh, let's look at verse number sixty-nine. This is the next thing that I, I want you to get, and I want you to really get it in your spirit. The next thing that we learn from David, and this, this is awesome to me. David is on a road to recovery. He's on a road. Uh, getting his intimacy back because make sure we understand uh, that David went astray. My Hallelujah God. to God. And we find that in verse 69, he said, the proud have forged a lie against me, 
but I will keep thy precepts my with God. my whole heart. David, what are you trying to tell us? He's trying to tell us intimacy corrects your focus. My it God. is intimacy would keep us focused. David is being, for he's focused on the precepts with his whole heart. He's not focusing on forged lies. Uh, make sure you understand. Uh, I heard somebody say distractions will haunt your action. Uh, make sure you understand there's distractions all around. There's lies all around. They're forging to forge a lie. You need to look it up in the Hebrew, a forged lie is a patched up lie. Hallelujah to God. It is a lie that have been patched in accusations and slanders and shreds and hints of accusation. Hallelujah. What it is is a big ball of nothing. It's a big ball of lies that ain't really about nothing. But yet he said the proud, they forged a lie against me. He said, but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Pastor, what is it that you want you to want us to know tonight. It is intimacy that keeps us focused. It is intimacy that keeps us yeah, focused yeah. on the precepts and keeps us focused with our whole heart instead of focusing on the forged line. He is getting caught. I don't believe David was on the phone telling everybody about the forged lies. But I think David, hallelujah, had his mind and his heart on the precepts. Yeah. Intimacy yes. that teach us to focus on what we can control. He refuted the fours and the past of lies with a strong desire to walk upright. David had a desire to do right. He had a desire to walk upright. He yes. had a desire yes. to seek the face of God. He had a desire to run after God. He had a desire, hallelujah to God, to, to receive, hallelujah to God, what God had for him. Even in the midst of all the lies. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. sir. So, Pastor, what are you trying to tell me? Tell your neighbor, it keeps us focused. Keeps us focused. Yes, sir. That's why it is important for us to be intimate with God. Or, or if we're not intimate, we're on the road to intimate. How? Because it keeps us focused. The Bible said, I will keep him. How? How will I keep him? In perfect peace. Whose mind is yes. stayed on yes. thee because he trusts in thee. God tells us to stay focused. If you stay focused, how? God said, I'll keep you in perfect and I truly believe in the midst of these fours lie that David, hallelujah to God, that I truly believe that his mind was stayed on the Lord and I believe in the midst of the patched up lie because how many of y'all David understand a patched up lie gonna wiggle loose, a patched up lie can't hold together, yeah, hallelujah yeah. after a while folks will just take up for you and say man y'all to quit lying on that preacher you ought to quit lying on them church folks how you know them church folks right you need to quit lying. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Make sure you understand God has somebody there that's going to fight your battle. God has somebody yes. there that'll, that'll take up for you. God has somebody there. Say, you know what? I see what you, I hear what you're saying, but you know what? But I don't see what you're saying. My God. My God. You're saying a lot of stuff, but you know what? Unless I'm blind, I don't see. My God. Yes. A patched up lie. David decided, hallelujah to God, I'm not going to be all focused up on a patched up lie. Hallelujah to God, but I'm going to focus on the Lord. The Bible said, as the eyes of the servant look to the hand of their master and the eyes of the maiden unto the hand of our mystery, so is our eyes upon the Lord, our God, until he come and have mercy on us. You have got to be focused on the Lord in, in intimacy. Pastor, why do I need to be intimate with God because it keeps us focused. Yes, uh, it keeps yes. us focused. Uh, it keeps us looking to the Lord. It keeps our minds on the Lord. I believe it with Joshua 1 and 8. He told Joshua get focused. Get focused. You can't afford not to be intimate with God. You've got to be focused. Why? Because this book of the law don't depart out of your mouth so you can meditate there in day and night that you may observe to do all that is written there. Then it is dead. It is dead. It is dead. That shall make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success. It is then, it is then when when we get intimate, when we get focused, it is then. We want to be prosperous. We want good success but we don't want to be intimate yeah, with God. Yeah. We don't want to be focused yeah, with God. Yeah. We don't want to be able
for hallelujah to God to be in a place uh, where nothing don't move us and nothing don't shake us uh, hallelujah to God come on here we ought to be people of stability we ought to be people of courage and people of character and people of integrity my God my God Oh God, oh, praise God. you. Hallelujah. The next thing we see, hallelujah, they got six points I want to make. And it's almost like the same thing. It's focused, it develops the steadfastness. And that word forge means to smear and to plaster oh, over. God. Hallelujah to God. I mean, his name is smeared. His name is plastered all over the place. Hallelujah to God. Back to going back to focus. One thing I forgot to bring out. One of my favorite verses, David. And see, he understands focus because it's Psalms 27, he just told her, one thing have I desired of the Lord, uh, and that what I seek at her. Yeah, uh, what yeah. is this one thing, David? How that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, to inquire of his temple. In the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. David said, one thing, one thing. I'm focused on this one thing. Yes, sir. And how many know it gives us the, listen, intimacy, not only does it develop focus, but it develops steadfastness. Yes. Hallelujah to God. How many of y'all know David was steadfast? Hallelujah to God. The Bible tells us we got New Testament to back us up. It said, thanks be unto God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Make sure you understand we're not fighting for victory, God, but we're God. fighting from victory. We're not fighting, trying to get the victory, but make sure you understand we are operating and we are standing on the foundations of victory and our fight is from victory to victory it is not for victory and he said thanks be unto God he gives us the victory the Bible said my beloved brethren be steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord hallelujah to God as you know your labor is not in vain in the Lord hallelujah to God and David is here how he's being fixed hallelujah He's being steadfast. I don't know what the lie was. No doubt it was some hurtful things. Uh, hallelujah to God. But David is making sure he's because of his intimacy with God, because of his close relationship with God. He's making sure that he's not weary and well doing. But he realized in due season he's going to reap if he faint not. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, hallelujah to God. Come on here. I believe what Paul told the church. He said, my beloved brother, long for my joy and crown. Stand fast in the Lord. Uh, hallelujah to God. We have got to get to the place in our walk with God. God is trying to get us to a place that we can stand fast. He is trying to get us to a place. And as you can tell folks that are intimate with God, you will tell folks that have been in the face of God. You can tell folks that have been in the presence of yeah. God because hallelujah I'm like Paul said none of these things move me yes yeah. sir we can be troubled on every yeah. sign yeah. yet yeah. not distressed we can be perplexed but not in dismay yeah. we can yeah. be persecuted but not forsaken we can be cast down but not destroyed yeah. hallelujah my God. Oh God, I pray to tell you they were steadfastness. Yes, sir. Intimacy. Hallelujah. Brings us to a place of steadfastness. Hallelujah. Now, now, now watch this. We got to, so now, now, now listen, let me, let me back it all the way up so we know where we at. What, so, Pastor, what is it that you want us to learn tonight? Number one, David went astray. Number two, on his pathway back to being intimate is that David understood that he had to keep the word of the Lord. Hallelujah to God. That's the second point that we wanted to bring out. All right. The third point that I wanted to bring out in this little exchange here. Hallelujah to God of the word of the Lord. The third point that I wanted to bring out concerning David was... Hallelujah to God. The path to intimacy is having the right perspective of God. Is that all right? My he God. said, man, thou art good and you do of good. Hallelujah. He sees the right path. Now we also see on his road to intimacy, how I many you know he's teachable? He said, teach me thy statue. And in verse 69, he said, the proud have forced a lie against me, but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. So what do we learn from that? On his pathway to intimacy, we find two things. Number number five, we see he has correct focus. How many of y'all know he's focused in? And then the sixth 
6, number 6, we also learn that he has developed some steadfastness, that he is steadfast. Well, let's go on to number 7. Now, I think we caught up from last week now. Now, let's Thank go God. to number 7. Number 7, he said, their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in thy law. So, what is it that you learn here now on the path with the intimacy? Make sure you understand. It is intimacy that causes David to have discernment. Yes, sir. It gives you discernment. Uh, David understood and he saw hallelujah to God that this person don't mean me no good at all. Uh, that this person, hallelujah to God, their heart is as fat as grease. Uh, hallelujah. He understand this person they may be prospering in everything that they do. They may be prospering uh, in the natural. They may be prospering, hallelujah to God when it came to fame and fortune and came to other things their fat is grease, but in every way look like they're prospering, but spiritually they are dull. Uh, hallelujah to God. David said, I may even be despised. Uh, I may even be persecuted. Uh, but David said, listen here, it is my intimate with God. Being intimate God lets me see the downward spiral of a man. Uh, hallelujah. Let me see people for who they are. Uh, make sure you understand the Bible said, come on here. Hallelujah to God. The Bible lets us know that the natural man, uh, hallelujah to God, cannot discern the spiritual thing. Uh, but make sure you we that are spiritual, we be able to discern spiritual thing. Uh, he said, David said, I see what they're about. They lied to try to hurt me. Uh, their heart is as fat as grief. Hallelujah to God. Come on here. Hey, listen, hey, you don't know my heart. God know my heart. God will give you discernment. Uh, David said, listen, uh, I'm getting close to God. I'm, I'm getting in intimate with God. How do you know, David? Because I'm able to read his heart. Uh, I'm able to see his heart. And his heart is fat as grease. Uh, hallelujah to God. There ain't nothing but pride and pleasure uh, and fame and uh, the pride of life, the pleasures of life, the riches of life. Uh, hallelujah. That's all that's in his heart. That's all that's in his mind. Uh, David said, I've got discernment and his heart is as fat as grease. It's intimacy that let him see people. Intimacy will let you see people for who they are. Yes, sir. When you get close to God, come on here. You ain't nobody got to tell you that person ain't hitting on nothing. Ain't nobody got to tell you this person is out to pull you down. Ain't nobody got to tell you, hallelujah to God. But I'm telling you, when you get close to God and you start walking in the place that God would have you walk in, how many of y'all know you can see folks for who they are? Let me tell you something. It ain't too many folks that can get over on me. Hallelujah. And it ain't me. The Bible said that a natural man receive not the things of the spirit of God for they are foolish unto him neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned but he that is spiritual he judgeth all things yet himself is judged of no man hallelujah to God come on here hallelujah when you get intimate with God God will give you discernment yes, you and you will see yes, will. for who they are yes, God will yes. let you see their motives yes. he will let you see the intents of their heart yes, how many know the Holy Ghost will tell you leave them alone? Let's go. The Holy Ghost will say, Hallelujah to God, Let's man, go. get out, get out. Uh, hallelujah to God, get out. Uh, hallelujah. That's why David said, Listen here, I've got discernment. But David said, Watch this, uh, man. He said, I know they're trying to, they trying to do me harm. Hallelujah to God, brother San Quan. Their heart is full of grief. Uh, their heart is fat as grace. Uh, hallelujah to God. I've been in some rough situations before. I've had to be in situations. Hallelujah. When I had to be nice to folks that just got through talking yeah, about me. Yeah. I had to be nice to folks that laughed in my face uh, and God. grinned in my face. My God. But God let me see that heart was yes. fat as grace. Yes. My God. Oh God, I praise you. Yes, sir. Uh, hallelujah, Brother St. Quan, their heart was fat as grease. Oh, and God, God let me see grease all over the place. My God. Hallelujah. To, yes, sir. Uh, but yet they be loving and chirping all in my yes, face. Sir. Hallelujah. To yes, God acting yes, like they appreciate me so much. But they had a yes, greasy God. heart. Yes, sir. Uh, it was fat as grease. Uh, uh, David said, let me tell you something. I'm not going to focus on that. Uh, hallelujah to God. Watch this. I can get lifted up uh, because you know what? God has given me some discernment here. Yeah. I'm able to tell. I just uh, tell you, neighbor, you get to the place in your walk with God, you just know. You 
Just know. Yes, I just, just know. know. Hallelujah. It don't Amen. take me long to be around Amen. somebody that say he ain't no nothing. Yeah. Huh? It don't take me long to be around somebody. Hallelujah. To know he is not, hallelujah, who he say he is. Yes. Huh? He is not in the place of God that he's making like he is. Amen. And I don't care what your title is, whether it's the bishop, the archbishop. It don't take me long to be around you to know where you at yes. in the Lord. Yes, yes. Hallelujah to God. Come on here. But David said, I'm not caught up in that. But David said, watch this. He said, but my delight is in the law. I'm not getting caught up in that. Their heart is fat as grease. My God. They're blessed on every side. How they're spreading themselves like a green bay tree. They're just blessed. Look how blessed they are. But they, watch this, y'all. But their heart, their heart is not right with God. But it looks like they're blessed. It looks like I have nothing. It looks like they're going up. It looks like I'm going down. How did they, but their heart is fat as grease. But David said, Watch this, but my delight is in thy law. David said, I've got relationship on my mind. I've got hallelujah, the intimacy on my mind. My David said, I'm not getting caught up that I'm able to have discernment. I'm not getting caught up in that, but I'm getting caught up, hallelujah. That I got. He said, My delight is in the law of the Lord. He said, The thing that I get my delight is is in walking in the law of God. I'm trying to understand the, the laws of God. He said, listen, I've gone, I know I'm getting somewhere in God. I've gone from duty to delight. Oh when God. you get to the place where it's not a duty to yes, come to church. Yes. Oh, can I go further? It's my not God. a duty to watch hallelujah to God. God. Virtual praise and God. virtual Bible yes, study. Yes. I'm not talking about just checking in. Yes, hey, Pastor, yes. hallelujah. They check out. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm talking about sit right there. Yes, I, I ain't yes. gonna look there. I had to let you know, yes. Pastor, ain't no fool. Amen. Just because I see your name don't mean, hallelujah, you stayed for the whole yes. program. You might have got two or three minutes of excerpt, but you still, in the midst of this pandemic, you still ain't got no time for God. My God, my God. God bless your soul. My God. Say so. Lord have mercy. My God. Come on here. Hallelujah to God. I have it now and then. I have to let you know, Pastor, ain't no fool. I can tell you right now who's watching and who ain't watching. Yes. I can tell you who checked in and somewhere sleep. Yes. I can tell you who checked in and somewhere cooking. My I can God. tell you that right now. My God. Yes. He said, but my delight is in the law. My delight is in the law of the Lord. My delight, hallelujah to God. Come on here. It is in the law. Hallelujah to God. He said, listen, I'm not caught up in where I am spiritually. I'm not caught up, hallelujah to God, and where God is taking me. I'm not caught up, come on here, that I'm going higher. I'm not caught up, oh hallelujah to God. God's got my name out there. He said, that's not my delight, but my mind to life is in the law. Yes, yes. It's no longer duty. My God. It's no longer duty, y'all. Hallelujah. That's why David was said, I was glad when they said, yes, yes, let us yes, go yes. to the house of the Lord. It is not painful Play. for me to, hallelujah to God, to read the word of the Lord. My, my, it my, is my, not my. a duty for me to get up and pray. My it God. is not a duty for me to seek the face of God. It is a delight. I look forward to getting up every morning and giving God praise. Yes, yes. I look forward to getting up reading my Bible. I look forward to going into praise and worship every morning. Boy, yes, it is not yes. a little duty. It is a delight. Yes, yes. My God. And David said it's to the place now. Hallelujah to God. I'm getting somewhere. I tell you, live on the road to intimacy. On the road it's, uh, to David intimacy. David said, man, it's a delight. It's a delight. Uh, ah, God, I pray you. It is intimacy that causes us not only to have discernment, but it also causes us to go from duty to delight. My God. Uh, but what's the next thing we get out of this? Look at verse 71. He said, it's good for me that I've been afflicted, that I may learn thy statue. Uh, David said, listen here. He calls me. Watch this. It caused me to see chastisement. It caused me to see affliction. It caused me to see my God. Uh, hallelujah to bow down. Uh, I see it in a different light. Uh, hallelujah to God. What do you mean you see it in a different light? I can see now uh, that when I went through, watch this, y'all. It was a blessing. Uh, how do you know it's a blessing, Pastor? Because it's working for my good. My uh, how do you know it's a blessing? Watch this, y'all. Anything uh, that will lead a man. Uh, to obey God 
God is a blessing and a favor. My God. Hallelujah, Pastor. I didn't like what I went through, but you know what? But it made me obey yeah. God. Yeah. Pastor, I don't like what I went through, Amen. but Pastor, it made me get closer to yeah. God. I don't like what happened, but Pastor, I'm going to be honest with you, it stirred me up. It excited me. And David said, watch this, y'all. It got to the place, hallelujah, the thing that I went through, it got to the place, David said, it was good for me that I got afflicted, that I got humbled down, that I got knocked down. It was good for me so I can learn your statue. Yeah, Somewhere yeah. in this affliction, I learned something yeah, about you. Yeah, Somewhere yeah, in this yeah, affliction, yeah. hallelujah, I learned the statues of God. My God, my God. Yes, I'll tell you, I see things in a different light. See things oh, in a God, different light. Oh, God, the good shepherd with his right of correction got me back in line. He confesses, hallelujah to God. David confesses that before I was chastised, I was rebellious. I was a rebellious man by nature. But thank God for the chastisement. Thank God, hallelujah to God. Come on here, that God allowed me to go through some things. Thank God. Uh, but how many know it worked for my good? Uh, the Bible, I believe, with David said in Psalms 118 and 18, the Lord has chastened me sore. Uh, he said, but he has not given me over unto death. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, David, what you trying to tell us? Uh, God has admonished him. Uh, he's chastened him. Uh, he corrected him. Uh, he disciplined him. Uh, he trained him and he taught him. Uh, but thank God uh, he didn't give me over to death. Uh, oh thank God. Uh, Hallelujah to God. It didn't get to the place uh, where God didn't allow me to be killed. Uh, he didn't allow me to be slain. Uh, I see what Job said. Uh, hallelujah. Though you slay me, yet will I trust her. Uh, when I see what Job was saying now, uh, it felt like uh, felt like a slaying. Uh, hi -ya. My God. Mm. He said, I see it. Tell you, it never felt like a slaying. Felt like a slave. Yes, sir. Hallelujah my, to God. My. Yes, sir. I understand now, David, what you're trying to say. Hallelujah to God. Come on here. Hallelujah. I want to learn the statues. Uh, watch this, y'all. I want to understand them. And watch this. I just uh, make sure you get this. When David, in this particular verse, when David said, I want to learn your statues, make sure that you understand that David is trying to let us know here. Hallelujah to God. Let me tell you something. You just don't read the Bible, number one, for knowledge. Sake. My God, my God. Of course, you got to have knowledge before you can do. Mm. Hallelujah to God. I get that. But make sure after getting knowledge, but you got that knowledge so you can put it in application. Yes. I don't, don't think David, hallelujah to God, wanted to learn the statue so he could show off and tell my everybody God. all what he know and yes. show what he know. Yes. But I think David, he didn't just want it for knowledge, but he wanted for application. My God. David is in this it is good for me. Listen, watch this, y'all. I'm not dwelling on my affliction. I'm not dwelling on the thing that I went through. Yes. I'm not mad with God. I'm not upset yes, with God. God. God, why you let me go through this? Why you put this on me? Like David God. said, I'm not crying that cry. David said, my cry is it was good for me. Yes. David is saying, hallelujah. I realize it was a good thing for me. Hallelujah, I've been afflicted. He said, but now, not only... Do I want to learn and have knowledge of your statue, but I want to walk it out in application. My God. So now, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? Tell you them a review time. Review time. Number one, he went astray. My God. What the day past wizard you want us to learn today? Number one, David went astray. Number two, on his path back to intimacy, it started with him keeping up the word. Number three, the path to intimacy is having a right perspective of God. Number four, the path to intimacy is being teachable. Number five, intimacy gives us correct focus. It is intimacy that causes us to develop steadfastness. Number seven, the path to intimacy calls him to have discernment, but he didn't glory in that discernment. How the intimacy took him from duty to delight. All right, number eight, number eight, intimacy calls him to see chastisement, affliction, humbling, being bowed down, 
in a different light. And David had got to the place where he wanted to understand and learn and to keep the statue, not just for knowledge's sake, but for application. You got me? Now, number nine, the next point I, I want to bring out, I think I may be able to finish this tonight. The next point I want to bring out, he said, the law of thy mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver. He said, it is better to me. It, watch this, y'all. It is intimacy with God. When we get intimate with God, number nine, verse number 72, it gives us revelation and illumination. My God. It gives us revelation and illumination. Remember the Bible said the entrance of thy word giveth giveth light? Right. Well, that's illumination. Hallelujah to God. To illuminate something means to give light. Revelation means to reveal something that had been hidden, something that has been dark. Hallelujah to God. Watch this. It is intimacy that gives us revelation and gives us illumination. A lot of us are caught up in information and education. Hallelujah. It's not about information and education. It's about revelation and illumination. So now it is intimacy. Hallelujah to God. So David, what did you learn? What did you learn, David? What did you learn? I learned that the law of thy mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver. I learned that the law of thy mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver. What did you learn, David? Nothing of value on this earth can compare to the word of God. My God. David, what did you learn? I learned that your word carries weight. I learned that your word carries authority. I learned that your word commands and demands reverence My and God. respect. I learned that your word is to be con is to be considered as a word from God and not a word from a man. What did you learn, David? David had his thousands of gold and thousands of silver, but he esteemed God's word above them all. My God. My God. Yes, sir. Yes. He said, the law of thy mouth is better to me than thousands of gold. Yes. Thousands of silver. It's awesome, ain't it? Yes. Yes. Hallelujah to God. Somewhere down the line, David must have read. Hallelujah to God. He must have read. He said, as the rain come down and the snow from heaven returns not thither, but water of the earth, make it forth to bring forth in bud and give seed to the soul, bread to eat, so shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth, and it will not return unto me void, but it accomplish that which I believe. Somewhere God. down the line, David got a revelation. Somewhere down the line, David got a revelation of God's word, and he realized, hallelujah to God, you may have the gold, you may have the silver, Hallelujah to God, but as long as I got a word from God, hallelujah to God, I'm going to be all right. And as long as I obey the law of your mouth, long, hallelujah to God, hallelujah, I esteem the law of your, the, your mouth. And I walk in obedience to your laws, not just the laws of your promises, but your the laws of your statutes and the My laws God. of your commandments. It is better to me than thousands of gold and thousands thousands of silver. Holly David is saying, if I had a choice, I'd rather cling to the law of your mouth. My David God. said, man, hallelujah, I'm getting close to God. How do you know, David? Because I got a revelation concerning the word. My God. That's it. My God. Right, here we go. We finishing it up here. Here we go. That was my ninth point. Okay. Here go my, here go my ninth, last point. Okay. Verse 73. Thy hand have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. Tell your neighbor, David is about got his intimacy back. David is about got his intimacy back. He said, Pastor, ain't none of this mean that. Don't mess up a good story. <laughs> Don't mess it up. Oh, Easy God. to mess up a good story. Tell you, David, just roll with it. Just roll with it. Hallelujah. Don't be, don't, don't be extra deep. <laughs> just, just roll with it. Yeah. Anybody oh. can come behind anybody. And tear up their story or tear up their little lesson. Yes, yes. I don't know, but how I many know we're not that kind of preacher? Let's go. But look, look at verse 73. And it opens up our eyes to see God as our creator. I already have a perspective of God. I already know that God is good in nature 
and good in action in verse 68. My God. Now I can see, I know I'm getting intimate with God because now I can see the many facets of God. Now I see we serve a multi-God. I understand now, hallelujah, watch this, y'all. I understand that he is my maker. It is, it is through his hands that have made me. I understand I don't have no dispute that he didn't make me. I, didn't, I don't have no dispute dispute, hallelujah to God that I'm here because of God but look what intimacy does intimacy says not only did he make me but he fashioned me not only y'all is he a maker of My men, God. but he is a molder of men hallelujah, he said God I see you now, hallelujah as the great potter, I see you now God, hallelujah I know I'm getting somewhere cause I see you as my great potter I see you as being my all in all, everything that good that happened to me, God did it. God, I'm learning to know who you are in another level. He would, not only are you my maker, but you made me. You molded me. You fashioned me. You are a not only a maker, but a molder of men. I know you molded me because I went astray, but some kind of way you knew how to mold me and get me back to where I needed to be. Not only are uh, you a maker, but you are a molder. And you know what? I'm learning a, a deeper purpose about you. Not only are you good in character, not only are you good in nature, not only are you good in action, but you know what? Not only are you just a creator. We think of you, God made the sea, God made the water, God made the birth as a creator, but not only, and God made man, but not only are you a creator, a, a maker, but you also are a molder. My, my. I'm who I am because he molded me. My God. Tell you, it didn't always be this way. It didn't always be this way. Yes, sir, but he molded me. Yes. Yes, sir. David said, I'm seeing now. You are a molder. Hallelujah. David said, I'm seeing now. I see you from another another level. Hallelujah. Not only did you make me, but you fashioned me. You fashioned me. You are my maker. You are the molder of my life. It excites me. When I think about that, it excites reverence. I've got to give you gratitude and affection toward God. I, when I see you, not just as my maker, but as my molder. He put forth, watch this, y'all. He put forth careful skill in the power of his hand and he formed me and he fashioned me. He took a personal interest in me because he made me with his own hand. Yes, sir. David said, God, you made me. He said, now watch this, y'all. I've got to watch this, y'all. Stay with me. I've got a deeper revelation concerning your purpose now. He said, God, I know your purpose. Huh? Not only are you good in nature and good in character and good in action, not only that, huh? I realize you are a creator, you are the maker, but not only that, you are the molder of men. I really know your purpose, but now watch this. Give me understanding. I need to know my purpose. You make me and you mold me like this. Yeah. Give me understanding. Yes. I need to know my purpose. My God. Yes, sir. I need to know my purpose now. That's what, look at the story. David was a nice story. Look, look how far David has come from, from when he said, hallelujah to God. Yes, sir. He said, I went astray. But tell your neighbor, oh, he's coming back home now. Look at him. Hallelujah. He's speaking some deep and wonderful things here. Hallelujah to God. He's asking God, give me the grace to understand that I may learn that commandment. He's crying out for wisdom. He wants to be holy and sanctified before his holy maker and before his holy molder. He's a molder of me. And, uh, it is intimacy caused me to run toward him. I see your purpose now in a way that I've never seen it before. Oh my God. Amen. Oh God. He wants to walk in the commandments. Glory. So he can walk in his purpose. He said, I know, I know your purpose. He said, but I'm striving to know mine. Ah, God. It is intimacy. Watch this, y'all. And we're going to pick it up on next week. It is intimacy that's bringing us to a place of change. Mm -hmm. It is intimacy. Can't you see change all in David? Mm -hmm. Just in these six, seven verses. Can't you see change? 
My God. Can't you see? Can't. Say, Quan, don't admit this little story. These verses here don't mess you up. Yes, sir. Well, look, I, I got to stop. I, 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 I got to quit. But let me do a quick review, and I'm done. First of all, this is Psalms 119, 67 through verse uh, 73. And listen, y'all, we're teaching tonight concerning intimacy. We, we're teaching concerning intimacy. David said, watch this, y'all. The first thing I want you to know, 10 points I want to bring out. I don't want you to go home saying, Pastor ain't teach us nothing tonight. <laughs> I want you to be able to, to die on the line, okay? Hallelujah to God. Number one, he went astray. Number two, hallelujah, David is, the way I see this story, he's on a path back to intimacy. Is that all right? And we see it starts with the keeping of the word. The number three, David intimately say, I've got a right perspective of God. He sees God now. Hallelujah to God. He sees God. He said, thou art good and you do good. He sees God. He's good in character and not only good in character and nature because his nature is his character and he's good, but he's also good in action. Not only are you good, but you do good. You are action doing God. Oh my God. Yes, sir. And so now the next, he's got a right perspective of God. He tell you that he's on the right path. On the next right thing path. is he's he's got to the place where he's teachable. That's where he said, "Teach me thy statue." He's on the right path. The next path he gets correct focus. Look at verse sixty nine. They lying on him, but how many know he has correct I focus? Uh, he said, "Listen, I'm gonna keep the precepts with my whole heart, even though they lying on me." And not only that, it does he has focus. He has steadfastness. Uh -huh. David is really running after God in the midst of the smeared and plastered lie. And when we find in verse number 70 that David path to intimacy causes him to have discernment. He, he is growing. He can see he's going somewhere in God. God is letting him see people, hallelujah, that's on a downward power. God is letting people, letting them see people for who he, who they really are. He's really going somewhere in God. He's really growing up in God. But David said, listen, my delight is not in a gift. It is not in my advancement, but my delight is in thy law. And we see that David said it's not a duty to come my to church. God. It's not a duty to pray. It's not a duty to seek the face of God. It is oh to the place now. It is a delight. My God. Yes, sir. And then we find out that intimacy, he sees chastisement, affliction. Now, he sees that in a different light. He looks at it. He said, what I went through was a blessing. It worked out for my good. Anything, this is David's testimony, anything that will lead a man to obey God is a blessing and a, a favor. It, is, it excited something in David that he wanted to learn that statue. And he didn't want to learn them just for knowledge's sake, but he wanted to learn them for application oh sake. Is that all right? And then number nine, intimacy gives us revelation and illumination. It's not about information and education. And David began to tell us how that the law of thy mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver. God, he began to put value on the word of the Lord oh and he esteemed God's word above everything else. And then number 10, number 10, it is intimacy that opened our eyes to see God. We know God is creator. We know him as the maker. We was taught that as a little child. But David began to see God as a molder. Not only did you make me, but you fashioned me. You molded me to where I am today. Holly David said, I see your purpose in a different light. You're not just a maker, but you are a mold of men. You fashion men. You are the great potter and you know how to fashion us. You know how to mold us to into what you would have us to be. My God. My God. He said, I see your purpose in a different light. Yes. He said, but God, give me understanding. Yes. I need to know mm. my purpose. Yeah. He said, that's why I want to learn the commandments. I want to be holy and sanctified before my holy maker and my holy molder. He said, it's causing me to run toward my purpose. That's why I want to walk in the commandments. I want to know my purpose. He said, listen, I've got a revelation of your purpose like I've never seen before. He said, but now, get, he said, God, I know you are molder of men because I went astray. My God. But look at me now. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. My God. Oh, God, I praise your name. Look at verse 74. I ain't got time to get into it because we're changing course. 
But look at verse 74. David said, when I was afflicted, I did what? David said, when I went astray, before I was afflicted, I went astray. But when look at verse 74. And look at David said, but they that fear thee, they that love thee, they that respect thee, they that are intimate with thee, they're going to be glad when they see me. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. He said they're going to be, man, David must have gotten a mess. He said, because, man, when I run up with the saints, they're going to be so glad to see me. Lord have mercy. He said, but you know why? Because I have hope in thy word. I don't know what David got into. I don't know what kind of situation he was in, but I do know this. He said, man, when folks that really love you, folks that are intimate with, with you, folks that are on another level, when I watch this, y'all, when I run up with iron, they're going to be glad to see me. <laughs> huh? Because iron shopping at huh? yeah. He said, they that fear thee, they're going to be glad when they My see God. me. Yeah. David said, I'm different. I'm not the same. Oh, God, I praise you. So now intimacy brings us to a place of change. My God. Intimacy, close relationship, yes, getting yes. closer to God, establishing our relationship with God, getting, growing in grace, growing in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, brings us to a place Yes, yes. And we'll pick it up on next week. Give God a hand pray. My God. I hope and pray something I said tonight was a blessing to you. Hallelujah. And we're going to ask everybody please to like us. Please share this. Give comments. Like, share, comments. Especially if this word was a blessing to you. I don't care if you just popped in for five minutes. If this word was a blessing to you tonight. If you don't mind, give us an encouraging word. Say, Pastor Fleet, would you really bless my soul tonight? That, that doesn't bless take nothing away from you. That's, you're not going to look like you're small in God because you said, Pastor Fleet, would you bless me? Drop bless the God. Pride. Hallelujah. Bless it's God. okay. It's, it's going to be okay. Hallelujah. Bless God. God. We bless God for everything. And hallelujah to God. Before we dismiss, remember this. Somebody asked the question, is there any word from the Lord? And I want you to know that, yes, there is a word from the Lord. I will see you Sunday morning at 8 o'clock for prayer. And then we'll be back at 11 o'clock for morning service. Give God a hand praise.